welcome everyone to session 12 the topic of uh, today's discussion is properties of amino acids so in our previous lecture uh, session 11 uh, we have discussed about the chemistry of uh, amino acids where we have discussed the structure and the general properties of amino acids and we have also classified the amino acids now in this uh, session we will continue with the properties of amino acids. The physical properties of amino acids. Uh, solubility, uh, high melting point, presence of asymmetric uh, carbon, zwitter ion and amphotericity. So first let us uh, discuss about solubility. Generally amino acids are soluble in water, acids and alkalis and they are sparingly soluble in organic solvents. They have a high melting point uh, and melt with decomposition. Uh, due to the presence of an asymmetric carbon atom uh, except glycine, glycine is optically inactive. All other amino acids contain at least one asymmetric carbon atom and are optically active and they exist in D and L forms. Uh, majority of the amino acids they form zwitter ion. Uh, it is uh, nothing but uh, an amino acid will be will have both the charges both plus and minus charge that is called as a sweeter ion amphoteric amino acids have both acidic and basic properties hence they are amphoteric in nature ionization of amino acids amino acids contain at least two ionizable protons each with its own pKa the carboxylic acid has an pKa and will be protonated at an acidic low pH. The amino group has a basic pKa and will be protonated until uh, basic pH high is achieved. So this is uh, the reaction where uh, you see the transaction how a cation to a zwitter ion and uh, to an anion as the pKa varies uh, the charge also varies. Amino acids carry a net charge of 0 at a specific pH uh, and uh, that is called as the isoelectric pH or Pi. So zwitterions predominate at pH values between the pK values of the amino acid of, of the amino and the carboxyl group. For amino acid without ionizable side chain the isoelectric point uh, our equivalence point Pi is uh, Pi is equal to pK1 plus pK2 divided by 2. So by using this formula we can calculate the isoelectric pH. Mm -hmm. At this point the net charge is 0. So, so uh, during this pH the amino acid is least soluble in water and the amino acid does not migrate in the electric field. So either uh, they have to be positive or negative uh, so to move in the electrophoresis. So at this pH uh, the electro uh, the amino acids uh, are not mobile they are neutral hence they don't respond to the electric charge. So amino acids can act as buffer. Uh, amino acids with uncharged side chains such as glycine have two pK values. Uh, so 2.34 uh, of the carboxyl group and uh, the amino group is 9.6 as buffer prevents change in pH close to the pKa glycine can act as a buffer in two pH ranges so this is uh, the pK pK1 and pK2 of uh, glycine so these are the two buffer ranges of glycine and the isoelectric pH 5.97 where it is going to be neutral Amino acids polymerize to form peptides. So peptides are small condensed products of amino acids. They are small compared with the proteins. So proteins are large polymers formed by the association of many amino acids. So uh, this is amino acid 1 and uh, this is this is amino acid 1 and uh, this is amino acid 2. So these two amino acids uh, they combine so this is the amino terminal and this is the carboxyl terminal and this is the amino terminal and this is the carboxyl terminal so 
in a peptide bond uh, the so this is amino acid 1 and this is amino acid 2 the carboxyl terminal of amino acid 1 uh, combines with the carbo amino terminal of the amino acid 2 uh, to form uh, this bond uh, which is already highlighted CONH bond and uh, this bond we call it as a peptide bond so this bond is called as a peptide bond and this bond is uh, rigid and it is planar this is a very very strong bond uh, we call it as a peptide bond so this is R1 is uh, the R group of the amino acid 1 and R2 is the R group of the amino acid 2 so here uh, the H and OH, uh, OH of COOH and H of NH2 is involved in the uh, uh, are being removed and uh, uh, a CONH bond is being formed and that is called as a peptide bond which is rigid and which is planar. Right. Okay. And uh, so usually uh, peptides are small products of amino acids maybe uh, three amino acids may join to form a peptide four amino acids may join to form a peptide five amino acids may join to peptide in contrast when we call it as a uh, we will call it as a protein only when it is a polymer where uh, many amino acids are joined together naming the peptides start at the we have to start at the end terminal so sometimes we can use the full name so this is using the full amino acid name so this is serine glycyl tyrosyl ala alanyl leucyl or sometimes we use three letter code serine glycine tyrosine alanine leucine uh, for longer peptides like protein we use single code which is uh, capitals serine glycine uh, serine and this is glycine and this is uh, you know, tyrosine and this is alanine and this is leucine peptides are uh, very very important and they do a variety of functions they work as hormones and pheromones insulin uh, it regulates the sugar metabolites which is again an uh, peptide hormone which is peptide chemically made up of small number of amino acids oxytocin uh, think of childbirth so it is uh, associated with a uh, lot of chemistry uh, human chemistry uh, sex peptide think of fruit fly mating neuropeptides substance p which mediate in the pain antibiotics like polymyxin b uh, bacitracin uh, for gram positive bacteria polymyxin from gram negative bacteria all these are peptides uh, amanitin which is present in mushroom uh, chlorotoxin uh, which is uh, present in the scorpions and uh, conotoxin which is present in the cone snails so all these are some examples of peptides and they do a wonderful jobs and they do a variety of functions and proteins are composed of uh, polypeptides uh, here we don't use the term called as peptide we use the term called as poly many peptides and many amino acids join together to form a peptide and many peptides join together to form a polypeptides covalently linked alpha amino acids uh, plus possibly uh, cofactors uh, proteins do a variety of functions they work as cofactors they work as coenzymes uh, uh, sorry uh, uh, yeah uh, proteins are compromised of polypeptides uh, they they have cofactors functional uh, non amino acid component metal ions are uh, organic uh, molecules uh, coenzymes uh, uh, they have organic factors prosthetic group covalently attached cofactors like uh, iron in myoglobin other modifications will take place in the proteins in the post translational modifications and some uncommon amino acids in proteins not incorporated by ribosomes except for selenocysteine arise by the post transcriptional modification of proteins reversible modifications especially phosphorylation are important in regulation and signaling uh, so with uh, all this uh, i just stop here uh, with this uh, uh, 
lecture on uh, the continued properties of amino acids where we have discussed the physical properties and some of the chemical properties we have also discussed about uh, the peptides and uh, uh, we have also discussed about the peptides and the importance of the peptides and we have also defined what are proteins so with this thank you thank you one and all